Hey church, so good to be with you and uh, be sharing a little devotion here. But I turned this devotion into a series, if you've been following me, back when the coronavirus first hit, because I thought of Daniel being in the lion's den and how he was surrounded by danger, crisis, virus, killers, uh, but no harm came to him. And so I said, what attracted God to send angels? You know the story. He was put in a prison because threw in the hole with the lions overnight, but he did survive. We'll get to that before this story's over. And uh, we're right there today. Uh, as you go back, I said, what are some things about his life, though, that caused, attracted God's attention to send angels? And if we had those same attributes in our lives, we'll attract God's attention. So let me just kind of summarize very quickly. Number one, it said that Daniel distinguished himself. In other words, set himself apart because of his exceptional qualities. He was always a hard worker. He was always loyal. He was always humble. He was always a person of integrity. He was the same at home or he's the same before the king all the time. That's what God wants us to be, people of integrity, reflect an extraordinary spirit. Secondary, he regularly prayed. Three times a day, he opened his windows, prayed to God, and that's how they threw him in prison because they passed the law. You can't pray to anybody but the king for 30 days. But well, he went home and prayed just like regular. Number three, he resisted culture's influence. And he did that all his life because they tried to rename him to Bel protect the king, the, the Baal god protect the king. That's what they wanted to call him, Belshazzar. But he always reflected because everyone saw him as Daniel, uh, God is my judge. So he resisted that culture. I shared that a few weeks ago, so go back and look at those if you want to. And then fourthly, he remained faithful in serving God because the, the king looked down and said, Daniel, the servant of the living God whom you serve continually. Remember, that was the king's cry as he opened the pit looking into him. Daniel, the servant of the living God. And that's what we want to be remembered by in our lives, that we remain faithful in serving our God in the middle of the crisis, through the crisis, through our teenage years, till we're old and dying, we're going to remain as faithful servants of God. Now this week, we're going to come to another passage, and it's just one little scripture, and in fact, it's just one little statement and I thought about cramming several things in. I said, no, I feel like God wants to take this because every word God says is important. That's what's so amazing about God. And he put me on this path, so we're going to take each one of these and really break them down. And so number five is he reflected a pure heart in a crisis. And let me show you that. In Daniel 6.21, if you want to go back and look at that, but this is what he said. The king looked down and cried out to him, and then Daniel's response back to the king was Daniel answered, O king, live forever. O king, live forever. Now I want to take just that statement and show you how powerful it is because of what came out of his heart. His heart reflected purity even in the crisis. I don't know about you, but if I'd have been betrayed and set up and, and you know, attacked and persecuted by a bunch of people who were jealous against me, if they would have caught me in this situation and challenged me to disregard my God and pray to him, if they would have then put this law in place and then thrown me into a pit, and then the king came down and said something to me, I mean, I don't know about all of us, but some of us, would probably say, get out of here, king. We, what are you talking to me about? Why did you do this? You know, that's our first question. Why? Why? We're doing that with God all the time. Why? But that wasn't Daniel's first response. And he didn't come against the king. He didn't attack the king. He wasn't mad at the king. He wasn't hateful. He, but look what his heart did in that situation. His words were, O king, live forever. Now, this was a statement that was generally used, but it was his words. His words reflected his heart, for out of the mouth, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so look what came out of his mouth, out of his heart, sitting in that crisis, was, O King, live forever. And it, I'm going to show you that it showed essentially three things, each with almost two things in it. So here's this, what that statement reflected. 
it number one, it showed respect and goodwill. Because that was a statement to honor him. You're king, yes, I honor you, the title that you are standing under, and I want you to live forever. That I have no hardness of my heart, I have no hard will towards you like, Man, I want you to be down here. Let's see you get in the pit with the Lions King. Uh, you know, I hope bad things happen to you. I hope you lose your election or whatever it might be. Our hearts would be upset even with the king, the authority. And even that's where God is testing our hearts when we're working in a workplace. Or are you under authority? Do you have goodwill towards those in authority to your bosses or young persons to your teachers, even older persons to your professors in college? to your policemen, to teachers, to your pastors, to leaders and people in authority. Where's your heart? Are you anxious? Are you hard-willed? Are you speaking good ill will against them? He showed respect and goodwill. Number two, he showed honor and that submission to the authority. And that's where he was, reflecting both of those things in there. He, he honored the king and he submitted to his authority. Like, hey, I'm here. You had to put me here, that's okay. I'll deal with it, and my God will deal with it. There's honor. You want to always show honor, and you always want to be submitted to the spiritual authority over your life. And that's what Daniel showed over and over and over again, because just think about it. You know, here he is, the king, you know, could has now tried to kill him in a sense. Well, what is he going to do tomorrow? Or how long will he keep him in the pit? But we find out that he took him out. But number three... When Daniel cried out to him, O king, live forever, I believe it reflected his heart showing forgiveness and releasing of the king of any debt as far as sin. In other words, he, did, he, he said, King, you don't owe me anything. I don't have any unforgiveness in my heart. And I think that's where God is testing our heart in these times like that is, where will our heart be? Even in the middle of the crisis, Will we be respectful, show goodwill? Will we honor, submit to authority? And also, will we release forgiveness and to people that have sinned against us, including those in authority? But maybe there's others that you're still holding that debt. And Daniel showed over and over he held no debt. And you know why? That led to he brought him out and he was back in power. He's back in influence again even though the king had tried to kill him. Well, if he hadn't had this heart, the king would have said, I can't trust you now. I'll never be able to trust you. See, God is looking for people that uh, he can trust. He's looking for people that show forgiveness, that show respect and show humility. And that's what Daniel did. And so I hope you, this is another lesson that you get today because I'm praying that as you develop these characteristics in your heart, that you're gonna also have the protection of angels. So let me close in prayer. Father, I thank you for every one of those that listen and hear and see this. I pray your blessings upon them. I pray your protection surrounding them with angels, Lord. Their homes, their families, their lives, their health, their businesses, their jobs, their states, their nations, wherever they are. Lord, that's what we're praying. Angels of God himself sent to surround us and to protect us. And that's what I'm praying for each and every one of us who are listening today. And so God, thank you for them. I bless them. I love them. And may your face shine upon them. And this word bring encouragement and strength and challenge to them in this day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.